Feel free to check out my tea public after the video. Aside from poorly translated German titles for Japanese monster films, Frankenstein left his own mark on the genre by starring in his own duology of films, Frankenstein Conquers the World and The War of the Gargantuas. Back in my King Kong vs. Godzilla review, I talked about how the film was originally a film pitch by Willis O'Brien that featured Kong battling a Frankenstein monster named Prometheus. And after it was showed to Toho, they decided to replace Prometheus with Godzilla. However, King Kong vs. Godzilla wasn't the only film to come out of that. Around the same time, producer Tamiyuki Tanaka commissioned a film titled Frankenstein vs. The Human Vapor, a follow-up to 1960's The Human Vapor, also known as Gas Human No. 1. And after the success of King Kong vs. Godzilla, there was plans to make Frankenstein vs. Godzilla. But the executives at Toho didn't think the film made a lot of sense, so that project was dropped in favor of Mothra vs. Godzilla. However, the idea wasn't completely dead, as Godzilla would be replaced by an all-new monster. And then came Frankenstein vs. the Subterranean Monster, known internationally as Frankenstein vs. Baragon. After confiscating the heart of Frankenstein's monster from Dr. Riesendorf, a group of Nazis transported to a research facility in Hiroshima, Japan near the end of World War II. Unfortunately, it was the day that the city would be decimated by an atomic bomb. This would cause the heart of Frankenstein to mutate into a savage boy who feasted on small animals. This catches the attention of Dr. James Bowen, played by the legendary Nick Adams, along with Kumi Mizuna as Sueko Togami and Tadao Takashima as Kenichiro Kawaji, in which they eventually capture the boy and study it. Meanwhile, the monster Baragon is ravaging villages, and later on Frankenstein escapes the research facility after showing signs of extreme growth, and you guessed it, the monsters fight during the climax. This is overall an absolutely fantastic film, on par with some of Toho's other monster classics like Rodan and Mothra. The special effects are great, the characters are outstanding, the scoring is fantastic, and Frankenstein, though being much different from the Mary Shelley novel, is honestly one of the best interpretations of the creature. But this film is known for… another thing. Remember that giant octopus that comes out of nowhere in King Kong vs. Godzilla? Well, in the alternate ending, instead of being swallowed into the earth from an earthquake, the giant octopus appears out of nowhere once again and drags the helpless Frankenstein into the ocean. This ending was requested by producer Henry Saperstein of United Productions of America for its stateside release, because he loved the octopus in King Kong vs. Godzilla. Despite it being shot specifically for the US, and was even promoted in the marketing under the name Frankenstein vs. the Giant Devilfish, the octopus ending was rejected due to its abrupt and unsatisfactory nature, and the original ending was used instead, with the film now being titled Frankenstein Conquers the World. But it doesn't stop there. A version of the film with the octopus ending aired on Japanese television by accident. Turned out that there was no escape from Oedaku's tentacles after all. Up next is The War of the Gargantuas, a loose follow-up to Frankenstein vs. Baragon, and by that I mean despite being a sequel, there are some things that don't really make it so. For example, the main cast is different with the exception of Kumi Mizuno who plays Akemi Tagawa. These actors play different characters, but share the same roles as the cast in the previous film. Here instead of Nick Adams as Dr. James Bowen, we have Russ Hamlin as Dr. Paul Stewart. In other cases, during flashback scenes where instead of Frankenstein, we have a young Santa, but it is clearly supposed to be a recreation of one of the scenes from Frankenstein vs. Baragon. Really, the only things that truly acknowledge that this film is a sequel is that the film's Japanese title is Frankenstein Monsters Santa vs. Gyra, and these two monsters are actually brothers who spawn from the cells of Frankenstein. However, in the film's American release, all references to Frankenstein are replaced with Gargantua, therefore making it separate from Frankenstein vs. Baragon. Although in the international dub, every reference to Frankenstein is kept. Alright, with that out of the way, let's talk about the film. It opens with a fishing vessel being attacked by… oh, well, I guess the octopus pretty much confirms that the alternate ending is canon. Thankfully, Gyra shows up to give the octopus what he deserves. That's right, no more random occurrences for this monster anymore. Throughout the film, the creature Gyra preys upon humanity as it turns out that humans are pretty tasty to giant Frankenstein monsters. 
Meanwhile, there are claims that this is the evil doing of the creature Dr. Stewart and Akemi raise in their lab, but our main characters refuse to believe them. After numerous attacks from Gyra, we're introduced to the Mazer Cannons, a military weapon that would become a staple in the Godzilla series. Here, they are very effective against Gyra. This conflict comes to a stop as his brother Sanda steps in to defend him. But eventually, Sanda discovers Gyra's hunger for humans, and the two duke it out in a battle that goes from the forest, to Tokyo, to Tokyo Bay, and further out into the Pacific. This battle between Gyra and Sanda would be acclaimed as one of the greatest monster battles ever put to film. The fact that the monster suits are humanoid shaped, and that they fight like real people, makes the battle very impressive to watch. This is the closest we'll ever get to an actual physical fight in Kaiju Ega. Until Attack on Titan, that is. The War of the Gargantuas would become an instant classic among the fanbase of Japanese monster films, praised for its action, special effects, and music. It was even included in a double feature alongside Rodan for its DVD release by Classic Media, and was even double billed with Monster Zero, aka Invasion of Astro Monster. But if I were to pick one, I would go with Frankenstein vs. Baragon. As much as I love War of the Gargantuas, I feel like this one has the better story, better characters, while also showcasing some great effects for the time. That's all I have for today's History of Godzilla. Thank you for watching, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys later. By the way, I'm not going to talk about Kip Hamilton's Feel in My Heart. Everyone's already talked about it and made fun of it, so... Yeah, I'll just leave it at that.